Well, I, I'm I'm already uh, I'm already accepting the fact that there's probably not going to be any announcement for Australia until a Steam Deck two happens. That's probably what's going to happen. I, th- I think this year before before they announce anything like that. In fact, mm. I'm kind of expecting their new VR headset to come before that. Before mm, any more reasons okay. for the Steam Deck, I reckon. I think it's codenamed the Deckard. But uh, that one actually sounds quite exciting for a couple of reasons as well, though. Not just because it's going to have, well, if go by the patents, Mm. a wireless mode, Mm. but it's going to be built on Linux as well because, you know, what's going to be running that wireless mode? And in the patents, I'm sure it mentions directly Linux as well. So, And you look at um, Gamescope, Mm. the the thing that basically controls all the displaying in gaming mode on the Steam Deck, and you can use it on desktop as well. That's had some VR stuff added to it as well. So it's like, hmm, interesting. I've not used VR in quite a while. The last, the last VR experience I had was with a Vive. Yeah, I think it was a Vive a couple of years back. I don't even know what the state of VR is like at this point, or even what the state really is on uh, specifically on Linux. Like, what? Not good. Okay. Not good. Okay. No. I mean, I've got, um, my Valve Index is down there beside me, and mm. it's just there's so many problems because it's like they released it, and yeah, they do update Steam VR and stuff a fair sure. bit, but it's like when they put it out, they didn't really bother with the Linux side of it all right. that much, really ever, and it's. You can understand it now that the Steam Deck's out because a, a huge amount of just their complete hardware focus just shifted over to that. Mm, and because that it's sense. obviously massively more popular than VR anyway, well, it doesn't take a genius to know why they're focusing on that. But from all the leaks and patents and stuff that we've seen of the Deckard, I mean, I think it's going to be quite exciting as long as it's not as expensive as the Index was. That was a big barrier, I think. How much was the Index? Because the index is still a thousand pounds for the full kit. Uh, jeez, that okay. And you've got to bear in mind, even when it was released, a bunch of like the tech, like the screens in it, was like years behind. Mm-hmm. And like now, you see all the different types of screens and screen technology coming out, and it's it needs an upgrade, especially at that price. It's just it's kind of ridiculous now, really. Yeah, I'm looking at the Australia. Like, how much it cost to get one here? It's two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. it's a, it's a big problem. It's a really big problem because the VR is amazing. Because I played through and completed Half Life Alex, and that Ooh, was nice. One of like my top five all time gaming experiences in my entire life. Mm-hmm. It was just, yeah, absolutely wild. Amazing. And it, it it wasn't just a showcase of VR. It was a showcase of how good Valve can be at making games as well. Mm-hmm. Which <laughs> when they everybody their knows, games but it was like their first proper full story game in a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when, wait, what was the last game before that that Valve actually released? Well, they also did Dota Underlords, which... What the hell is Dota Underlords? <laughs> So the auto chess became oh, really popular. Oh, right. And okay. So Valve decided to jump in on that. They made Dota Underlords because, you know, they, they don't want to jump in on the new IP for some reason. Um, and that's sort of started popular and then it just completely dropped off really fast and they just haven't bothered with it again. And I think before that, the last one was probably Artifact, their completely failed card game. So they haven't exactly had a lot of luck, really, when it comes to games. Yeah, I wonder why Valve doesn't make games anymore. 